Why are we fascinated by time travel? Well, you know, people very often ask me, why am I interested in time? I say, well, because I've always lived in it. Yeah, yeah right. It's, <laughs> and we are. We, we feel very trapped in it. Yeah. It's like we try and hang on to the moment. We take photographs of everything. Right. We take, you know, right. We desperately want to hang on to this reality, and it recedes. Yeah. yeah. What time travel allows us to do is to say, OK, but what if we could? What if we could yeah. preserve that moment? What if we could revisit that moment yeah. genuinely? Well, that's all science fiction is about what if. Yes. What if we could travel through space? Yeah. What if we could travel through time? You flirt with science fiction all over the place. Very much. I would submit that The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Rises are actually dystopian science fiction. Right. Because you're looking at a hypertrophied corrupt state. Yeah, Dark Knight Rises, it's an it's experience of, of dystopian future um, and looking at demagoguery or looking at all these things that can happen. I think there's an aspect of science fiction that, that celebrates human potential, where yes. only a hero is your answer, is your salvation. Yeah, very much. They didn't choose me, they chose her. For what, Cooper? To save the world. I think there are all sorts of different ways of looking at time travel. And when I came to do Interstellar, which is not a time travel movie, but has that element in it. It does fold time at the end. It does. You still approached it very rigorously. Yes. By going to some of the top experts. It was a really fascinating part of the process because Kip Thorne, who was one of the original... Caltech, leaders, I think, right? Caltech. Yeah. And Kip is one of the great minds in you know, physics. What he taught me is that once you can grasp those physical concepts, the concepts of astrophysics, they, they offer you this great launching pad for story possibilities mm -hmm. to do with relativity. And all right, these, time these dilation. Aspects. Exactly. If you look at apocalyptic ideas in science fiction, they tend to come in waves, and the mm -hmm. 70s was a very strong wave of sure. apocalyptic thinking. But you're coming out of the 60s and, and a certain unleashing of human consciousness, and so, you know, yeah. of course it was going to manifest itself that way. And after September 11, there's a big resurgence of it. Sure. Almost immediately. Things like I Am Legend, things like there's a big wave of, right, right. you know, very, very concerned back to that 70s idea of, you know what, we may well screw this all up. I'm fascinated by the way that science fiction is always, you know, manifesting our, our angst, our dreams and our, and our nightmares. Do you take it as read that aliens exist or, or is it a wait and see kind of thing? I think for me, I think any statistical analysis, if you're going to go by statistics and you look at Carl Sagan looking at the idea of what are the mathematics behind is the life of the planets? Mm -hmm. Those same statistics are going to tell you that, yes, there have been civilizations in the past, if there have been, if there is intelligent life off the Earth. But I also think that one of the hardest things to, to wrap your head around in terms of our place of the universe is if we are intended to connect with other planets or other civilizations, they're so far away. There's something that speaks to our souls about time travel where there's a fatalism involved. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm that is reassuring somehow. Right. Because it tells you that mistakes were always going to happen. Yeah. I mean, one of the fascinating things I was explaining to my kids the other day, that you look at your idea of a telescope. A telescope is a way of looking back in time. It's a time machine. Not just space, yeah. it's a time machine. And you look, the, the smaller the star, the further away, the further back in time you look. Yeah. And theoretically, you could make more and more powerful telescopes and you can look further and further back in time. Which yeah. is, it's just a mind-boggling concept. Yeah. So Theoretically, the sun could have gone out seven and a half minutes ago and we just don't know <laughs> yet because it takes light a while to exactly. get here. Let's hope not. Yeah, well. But that idea of looking back in time as you look out into the world, the fact that everything we see in, in this room when you look around, you're looking back in time. I think the potential is limitless for time travel stories. Chris, thanks for doing this. No, well, thank you for having me. It's yeah. exciting to talk about. Okay, good. All right, give us a cut then. I'll give you a cut. Done. Done. I'm going home. <laughs>